Hello everyone, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. If you've been following me on social media or even on YouTube, you'll see that I'm starting to delve into different areas of art, and one of them is film photography. With film photography, and that's what this video is gonna be about, um, I've been having a lot of my friends, family, coworkers, etc., uh, coming to me and saying, hey, I have these old film, these old negatives from my grandpa, from my great uncle. Uh, do you know who can digitize them, how to get them on the computer? And so far, my answer has been, well, I think I saw somebody on Google out in Baton Rouge that does it, or I get advertisements for companies that'll say, you know, send us your negatives, we'll print it up, and we'll send you the negatives back, or even develop negatives and make prints and send it back. So that was my answer for people that were getting or wanting to get some stuff digitized. But I needed a solution for myself. Not so much that I really wanted to print up um, digital copies, and that might be something I'll look into down the line, but I wanted a way to preview and to upload and show some of the negatives because I just have copious amounts that I'm taking. So I was looking and I started looking at scanners and I saw the prices of them and I just, honestly, I, I can't afford a scanner and I don't have a room for a scanner. Then I was looking at smaller scanners for 35 millimeter for 120 film, but it didn't seem like they were readily available. I believe 35 millimeter and some 120, but I'm also doing some in four by five. So that kind of just limited me to only a certain few things. Then I came across some uh, videos and techniques about how you can use your cell phone to digitize for free, where essentially you use the white screen of your cell phone. Um, you take a picture of the film on top of that with a digital camera, you then uh, process it in Photoshop or um, a free video editor. You invert the image, you change the saturation, and you have your black and white copy on the computer. So at first I played around with the Kindle, where I pulled up a white screen on the Kindle, just went into Google and searched for that, uh, increased my brightness, laid my film on top of it, and photographed it with my cell phone. Now, the reason I photographed with my cell phone is I didn't want to take out the digital camera and then start having to upload and process everything in, um, I use GIMP, it's a free uh, video pro uh, image processor. But I didn't want to do that whole process, so I just wanted to use my phone and use a ready-made app. So I read an article and it had like the five best or reviewing five different um, negative scanners on the phone. And the one that seemed the freest and had um, just no restrictions on it was a uh, the Kodak app. So I'm gonna use that for today. I'm gonna show you what I've used. I did one with this, and I'm gonna throw that image up on the screen. And I will say, before I go further with this, uh, thank you to um, the members of Abbeville. Last Friday, they had done um, a cemetery tours where each one of the people involved did research on one of the people buried in the cemetery and then either acted out the part of that person and gave historical um, facts about that person through monologues or yeah, I guess it'd be a monologue or they played a part of a family member who and then talked about the person in the tombstone um, that was buried there. And they called that, um, I think, Memories from the Past or Voices from the Past. I'll have to look that up. Anyway, they allowed me to come out and photograph and experiment. So just huge thank you to them. And these images are going to be from that. The first one that I'm going to show you is one that I had digitized from here using this screen. And when I zoomed in on it, I kind of saw a little bit of pixelation. So I'm not, wasn't too happy with using the Kindle. This is the HD Fire. Uh, but I think it would suffice. Then 
my friend Ryan was talking about how he had placed an order for art supplies on Amazon and he picked up a light box, uh, sorry, a light pad for $15. And usually when I look at them in the store, usually they're more expensive than that. And it might be that it's just mass produced, it's a na nameless brand or something like that. So I looked online, looked on Amazon, and I wound up ordering one. This one I think cost me a little bit less than 20 bucks. Here's the information sheet on it. And after this, I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna show the film on it, and I'm gonna show the pictures that I had taken with it and then talk about each one of the issues that I had with the app or what I had to do with the film to adjust things. So anyway, this one was uh, 20 bucks. It's a good size. It's inside, outside diameter, 36 by 23 centimeters. Um, roughly translated, it's probably um, nine and a half by 13. So I'm gonna experiment down the line with watercolor using this and see how it works. But one of the usages it says was um, photograph um, on the box, I think it said viewing x-rays. So it can be used for the purpose of essentially what we're looking at. Okay, so $20, very cheap setup. Uh, there's no internal battery that I know of. Um, that being said, you could hook up to your laptop. I have a little port right here that I hook up, or you could have a portable battery charger if you wanted to go out and about with it. I'm gonna turn it on, and hopefully it doesn't get too bright and blind, y'all. Let's see. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna show most of everything now here and zoomed in at, let's see, I wanna to zoom to, to here. That should be good. Okay, so the first image, I'm gonna show you the film and then I'm gonna talk about it and I'm gonna throw the image up of it processed in the uh, Kodak app. Okay, so this is ortho lith film that I've been experimenting with. My main goal has been to take photos and be able to display it as an ambrotype, putting a black background underneath. It worked in the app surprisingly well. With the app, I just take the photo, it automatically inverts it while you're viewing the film, so you don't have to put it through a process to invert the image, uh, meaning going from a negative to a positive. Um, but from there, you then crop, and I figured out if you take a wider picture, it's better to crop down on it. Uh, those were the, the two things that I saw so far. The saturation option doesn't seem to do anything, and so I'm not really sure. I'm not a digital photographer. I'm not a, somebody that processes in that fashion. But uh, the main point is, is that if you can teach your family members how to just take a photo on top of a light object, like put in their film, and then from there, just showing them how to crop it, that's usually seems to be just good enough and you get good results with that. I was really surprised that this film came out so well uh, digitizing. And that was um, a really cool couple that I'm friends with that had got me um, connected with the lady running the memory, if, if tombstones can talk, if headstones can talk, and allowed me to come out and photograph. Now, after that, I wanted to be able to view other film in general, not just things from this uh, project that I was doing from the cemetery. This is a different cemetery where I was just testing out a box camera that I got, an antique one off of Amazon, uh, off of eBay. And I felt that it was really shaky, the camera, because it was a box camera and I was trying to get the lever actuated and it was four by five, so it was a big box. But once again, the digitized came out really well. So very happy with that. So far, there was no issues with the film, with the digitizing. I think four by five worked really well. Another photo from that um, that scene from the cemetery, and I'll, I'll toss that up. So 
So that was a, a Western Cyclone camera that I had used. This was a Seneca um, number 32. I had some sheet film left over and I was just testing out these cameras. I try to like uh, scavenge across the internet for very low priced antique cameras that I could hopefully use. Now let's look at, um, we're gonna look at 120 film because it's gonna be different on here. And then we're gonna look at 35 millimeter. So what I had happen with 120 film was the fact that it wants to curl, it wants to roll, etc. I have these pre-cut mats that are cut to um, two and three fourth by four and three fourth. And it does a sufficient job of holding it down flat, but if you have a mat cutter, I think it would work a lot better. Uh, simply just taking even, I think it's one ply, taking a razor blade and cutting out a shape that you need to hold it in place would help. And if you start having heavier things to put on top of it, I think that'll help with the curving of the paper as well. So that was one of the things that I was fumbling with when I started going to the 120 film. I'd used an old, um, what camera did I use for this? A 616 camera, which I had to um, re-spool a 120 roll onto it. And since it was at night, I had to do some long, long exposure. So I got a lot of blurs with people and it was just me experimenting, me learning. I think I made every photo problem in the book, every mistake in the book, but I learned a lot just going out and about doing that. And you'll see kind of the blurriness of this person that I've thrown up that image of. Then I had another 120 roll. This one I put in a Kodak Brownie. I think it's the Brownie Special 616. The other one was 620, I'm sorry. Uh, 616, you put adapters in to take the 120 film. And you can see how the curling gives quite a bit of an issue. So I'm thinking especially cutting some mats to the sizes would help greatly. Another issue is that the curling was popping up over the side, which then could cast shadows across it. I'm not sure if we're in frame to see that. Let's see. Yeah, you can see some of the shadows that it was casting here. So that was a little bit of an issue that happened. Uh, one of the things with the cropping, I think at this point I'd realized, um, I knew I had to change the ratio down in the app, but if you slide sideways, you could slide it to free meaning that you could change the ratio any way you want, the cropping, and that just made cropping a lot easier. It's probably just a preset thing to help if you wanted to um, to print them out and have them on standard size uh, prints if you were to send them into Walmart or wherever you can get them printed. Uh, with this one, this is just me being a novice and making mistakes but so far it's pretty cool to let me view everything that I wanted. Then last but not least, I have some 35 millimeter film, which I'll throw the two pictures up. I think I did the, um, the Steens one, but vertically. This one, we're getting a rounding taking place in this fashion. So I would, think that maybe a smaller cut a heavier board would have it lay flat where the mat is closer on all sides but the image that I'm putting up I don't think it really distorts it too much um, so if you were just going through family uh, film 35 millimeter you could just kind of bust them out bust them out bust them out these are all black and white uh, I think there's an option option for color on there but I'm not sure what that does. I don't have any black and white film. I believe this is the second image that I put up. The app had a vignette, vignetting option, so I figured I'd just play with that. 
I didn't really change exposure on any of these, maybe one or two of them just to see. But essentially it was just set up, point and shoot <clears throat> in this situation on the app. It inverts it, uh, you crop it, you change the orientation, and for the most part you have something that seems to be pretty good. I, I didn't see any pixelation when I zoomed in using this as the background. In person, when I look at it, I do see line striations, but they didn't show up in the photos. So, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was helpful in some way, shape, or form. <clears throat> Let me know what you do to digitize your negatives. And let me know what type of experiments you would like to see of me just using this, uh, this light pad. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you all soon.